Hey there, my name is Jaden, here for Foam Armory, and today we're going to be looking at another Fortnite build. This is Daredevil's Mask from the new Fortnite Nexus Wars. Check it out. Today's build just wouldn't be possible without the help of Zakik and this epic 3D model. I was able to draft up these templates in Pepicure Designer, including flaps to layer certain pieces, as well as lines to indicate undercuts and detail lines in the face of the material. Right out of the printer, we can transfer all of these patterns to foam. For this build, I was able to get my hands on some HD foam by SKS Props. This stuff is made for foam crafters, by foam crafters, so I was eager to test it out for myself. I began tracing out the pattern parts, being sure to flip over my pattern pieces to make two symmetrical sides to cut out of the 6mm sheet material. I was pleasantly surprised by how well the foam ate the ink from the sharpies I was using to trace. It doesn't smudge like some other, cheaper foam rolls I've used in the past. With a steady hand, I was able to trace out even the thin brow piece clearly and cleanly. I also made sure to mark the eight separate triangles that make up the horns now so that I wouldn't lose track of them later during assembly. While the majority of this build is fabricated in 6mm foam, the inserts around the eyes need to be even thinner, so I trace them onto some 2mm HD foam. With all the pieces traced out, I set to work cutting out each and every piece. For the raised details on the sides of the head, I was sure to flare my cuts outward to give it a nice bevel. This will give us a lot more subtle variation to the design than a flat 90 degree cut. Just be certain your blade is good and sharp, or you'll be doing a lot of cleanup after the fact. The face of the ear cups was also cut at an angle, but inward, to join the outer edge of the ears. That way, when we join the two faces together, they'll form a nice, clean bevel. I took my time during the cutting process to achieve the cleanest cuts I possibly could. This saved me a lot of time in cleanup and helped me nail details like the harsh bevel of the brow line. The hardest piece to cut out by far was the main base of the chin and the sides of the helmet. The chin strap was flared outward on the front edge and the rest of it was carefully cut at a clean 90 degree angle. This was definitely time consuming but the end result was well worth it. The tops of the mask were beveled along the cranial ridges and flat on top to achieve a subtle angle between the sides and the top of the mask. After gently cutting the eye inserts out of the 2mm foam with a fresh blade, all of the horn pieces were cut at a deep angle and set aside. Once everything was traced and cut, the pieces still weren't quite ready for final assembly. Detail lines need to be carved into the top of the mask, and a few undercuts need to be made to several different parts. I used my patterns as a guide to trace those markings to the foam. The ear cups needed a more subtle layer of detail, so I traced out the inner edge of the faces and carefully cut along that line. This left me with an outer piece that I was able to gently bevel with my rotary tool. After dry fitting the pieces together, I was extremely happy with how sharp the effect looked. I was able to reassemble the inner and outer pieces with the help of a little super glue. I like to use Loctite Gel Control Super Glue when working with foam. The control is great for small details and it has a bit more working time since it doesn't immediately soak into the foam. With the faces complete, I added the undercut to the edge of the ear pieces by scoring the foam about halfway through on the inside of the piece. I added similar details to the shape of the chin by cutting out V grooves on either side of the chin and folding them inward. I also made sure to mark the flaps for layering the detail pieces onto the side of the mask at this point as well. The markings on the top of the mask were made by scoring parallel lines about halfway through the foam with a sharp blade. These lines were then opened up by gently heating the foam to pop them open. Be careful to move the heat around as you do this. You don't want to accidentally burn your foam. As a final touch before assembly, I used a stone bit and my rotary tool on low to knock down the edges on my bevels ever so slightly for a more rounded, cartoon feel. I have affiliate links for all of my tools and materials down below in the description. I brought my contact cement, foam pieces, and heat gun outside for ventilation. After giving my contact cement a quick stir to eliminate any lumps, I took a moment to organize my parts on the table. Then, I set to work gluing the mask together. I find that two layers of contact cement makes for a firm, 
lasting bond without much mess. I began by closing the loops of the eye inserts and attaching the brow to the mask. Note, I am assembling the outer edges of the brow, not the bridge of the nose at this stage. A heat gun helps aid the curing of the glue, especially given how cold it's been getting lately. Enjoy this close-up shot of exactly what the edges you'll be joining should look like. After a second layer of contact cement, you can really put some elbow grease into pressing your seams together as accurately as possible. Don't be afraid to wrench on the pieces if need be. This seam is fairly visible, so take your time. I then touched the edges of the 2mm foam together and that seam just disappeared, which was super convenient. The center seam at the top of the mask went together evenly as well. I made sure to press the edges together along the entirety of the length because of all the stress of the opposing curves. The brow and side pieces were then layered with glue and left to dry while I assembled the first parts of the horns. The horns were each assembled as two halves and then those halves were glued together, four pieces becoming two, becoming one. The top of the mask was then glued down to the sides and brow, again wrenching on the pieces to keep them from gluing together in the wrong spots. The result was one of the cleanest brow lines I have ever achieved on a foam build, so that was a major confidence boost. The back of the mask goes together a lot like my Doctor Doom Fortnite build, which honestly makes a ton of sense. Then it was a simple matter of gluing the edge of the ears around the face of the ears. Once those two sub-assemblies were complete, I was able to layer up the sides of the mask following my guidelines. The top of the mask was then layered over the side and chin piece, and the back of the mask was glued into place at a slight offset for a layering effect along that join. When you return to your bench, you should have something like this. A full mask minus the assembled horns and eye inserts. I was very happy with the horns. They reminded me a lot of my other Fortnite build, Fade's Tier 100 mask from Season 3. Before I did any final sanding or sealing, I wanted to achieve a better shape over the bridge of the nose, so I heated it up again and formed it against the wooden handle of my paint knife until it cooled down. When I was happy with that shape, I set the mask aside and started to shape my horns further with my rotary tool and a stone grinding bit. The goal here is to sharpen the outer edges and flatten out the underside so that we can tack the horns down with super glue. The eye inserts were placed on the inside of the mask and reinforced with hot glue. To smooth out some of the details in the mask, I pulled out my foam clay and, with a little help from the end of a paintbrush and some water, I smoothed around the edges of the inserts as well as over the bridge of the nose. I was also able to use my paint knife with a little clay to smooth between the front of the horns and the top of the mask while preserving the sharp edges of the horns. Be sure to leave the foam clay to fully dry before moving on to filling. I tend to fill small gaps and seams with quick seal silicone caulk. This stuff is super flexible and takes paint extremely well. All you need to do is apply a liberal amount directly to the mask and then smooth it down with a wet finger. To seal the pores of the foam, I watered down some matte Mod Podge and applied two layers to the inside and outside of the mask. Be sure to watch for drips and runs because this stuff has a decent body to it. With that, I applied a layer of Plasti Dip before paint, but I was unhappy with the center top seam, so I took some time to apply another round of Quick Seal to that seam before laying down a solid layer of Satin Finish Apple Red Rust-Oleum. Satin and metallic finishes are great for Fortnite builds for the softness they bring to the overall build. I was really happy with how clean the etched lines on the top of the head looked at this point, so I went forward with finishing the piece in acrylics. I mixed a little white into my crimson for the chin piece, and I applied it with a soft, slightly wet brush to help limit any brush strokes. I also applied this color to the inside of the chin strap for the sake of display. For the sides of the mask, I mixed up a dark gray and, working slowly, I filled the recesses of the helmet, being sure not to get any gray on the raised edges. At this point, I darkened the etched lines on the top of the mask with the same muted crimson before mixing up a bright pastel pink to dry brush the edges of my bevels. Be sure not to get any of this color on the gray areas of the piece and let the color texture of the 3D model guide your dry brushing. As a final touch, I dabbed a little pure white to the very tips of the dry brushing before calling it done.
So here's the final build. It's super lightweight, it's super easy to wear, and it is in fact made to be the size of a child. It's not a mistake, it's for somebody else. I was actually shocked how easy it is to see out of these two eyepieces. I really thought they were gonna be a little too close, but they actually fit really, really nicely. I had a lot of fun trying out different ways of working with this HD foam. I was really happy to get to work with it and to get it at a price that was frankly very reasonable. I think there's a lot of pros to using a foam like this. Obviously because it's more dense, it shapes better, it holds its shape better, and it's much easier to get those sharp undercuts. I also found it really easy to sand through, paint over, it has very few surface imperfections, it takes glue really well. It really is a great product, I just don't know how necessary it is for foam building. I get a lot of people approaching me asking me what density of foam do I use? Where do I get my foam? The truth is, for the most part, I get my foam from my local hobby store. Now, for you, that might be a Blick Art Materials, in which case, get yourself some HD foam. Otherwise, if you're like me, it might be a place like Michael's. And they also have a good product. Is it the same quality? I don't know, but they got a really nice coupon, so you know, coupons. Get yourself a coupon. I think my favorite parts of this build had to be the detail lining on the top of the piece, as well as the ear cups and the horns. These three areas of detail really pop out and make it very clear what you're looking at and they draw the eye in really well. Honestly, it looks really good, just top to bottom. If you've got someone in your life who really loves Fortnite, or if you yourself are that someone, I'd give this build a try. Fortnite lends itself to foam in a way that I have not encountered any other franchise. So please, the links to these templates are gonna be down below in the description. Try it out for yourself. And if you like these templates, if you want to get them a week earlier, you can become one of my patrons. I want to give a huge shout out to our four patrons. Jennifer Zayer, Pan Dulce, Kieran, and Austin of AJ Plays Piano. Thank you all so much. We're going to be doing another patron chosen build. And if you want to get in on that yourself, go ahead and check that out in the link down below in the description. Additionally, if you like what you see, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, it helps us out. And if you wanna buy something for yourself, I do have an Etsy. Again, link down below in the description. But for now, I've been Jaden. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care. I forget, are we, are we as Minnesotans the weird ones when it comes to coupon? Yeah, it's definitely coupon. It's coupon? Yeah. Ah, dang.